Today's session will be about publishing during a PhD, and we are very fortunate to have three very good speakers to be with us today. First presenter, we have Dr. Sarah Posh from the Griffith University, uh, Queensland, Australia. Uh, Dr. Sarah Posh has been recognized as a rising star in the marketing discipline by the Australian newspaper in 2022. She has received the 2022 uh, Emerging Marketer Researcher Award from the ANSMAC or the Australian and New Zealand Marketing Association, which is one of the very biggest awards there. And she also received the 2022 Griffith Business School Provide Chancellor Research Excellency Awards as well. Congratulations, Sarah, there. And her email is right there in on the page here, if anyone wants to reach out to her. The next presenter, we have Dr. Felix. Dr. Felix is currently an so Decla Fellow, which is one of the very top uh, researcher in the country and also a senior lecturer in marketing at the University of Queensland. His research primarily investigated the influence of feeling and emotion on consumer behavior. He has co-authored more than 100 journal articles and based on the ABDC journal public publication since 2020, he is the most productive business scholar in Australia from the peer ranking. Um, his email is also there as well. Now, third presenter, we have associate, sorry, we have Professor Catherine Prentiss um, from the University of Southern Queensland. She is also uh, head of marketing discipline and also the um, associate editor for four journals. And she is also a regional editor for one journal as well. So the yes, four journals are in Q1. Uh, one of them is in B rank. This is so, not for me. Um, okay. Now, uh, first journal is services in service industry journal, tourist review, uh, journal of yes, hospitality yes. marketing and management, and also journal of global scholar of marketing science. So those are the one that she is associate editor. She has a very good and strong, you know, uh, editorial board relationship and um, experience that we could learn from her today as well. And her um, email is right there. Okay, uh, I was thinking, you know, if, since I already introduced a three speaker, I might as well introduce myself. <laughs> my name is Park Taishon and that is my email. So I'm associate editor of the two journalists listed there, uh, Australian Marketing Journal and Journal of Strategic Marketing. Uh, I noticed people tend to put the photos when they were young. So I put in a photo when I was 18 there. So that's good. Now let's have a start. Oh, we already have 52 people. So um, I, I remember we bet on some, some people. All right. So the first thing we're going to talk about today. Now, I, I just want to tell the audience that I actually did not tell the questions to any of the speaker because I'm trying something new and I want to get the, the most organic answer from them. So this is why we didn't tell them yet. So I hope the three speaker not get upset with me. So first of all, uh, we're going to go in the order of Sarah, Felix, and Catherine. There are a few set of questions. Some of the set of questions, we go in this order. And then the ne next set will be like Felix, Catherine, and Sarah. So first of all, we would like to talk about the motivations. The motivation of doing publication during your PhD. So Sarah, um, I understand that you have published uh, two or three papers out of your PhD or during your PhD time. Could you please share with us what was your what were your motivation to do those papers during the time of your PhD? Thank you, Park, um, for the warm welcome and the introduction. And um, good afternoon, good morning, everyone uh, attending the session today. Um, thank you for having me. Um, so. Um, Thanks for the question, Park. I guess uh, very um, similar to many of us here, the motivation for publication during the PhD is um, to get a job after the PhD. So, um, well, uh, it's when I did my PhD, I, I, it was actually the um, the traditional PhD thesis. So uh, at this at the moment, um, usually PhD candidate have the option to do the thesis uh, comprising uh, of papers or traditional format. So at the time I did my PhD, it was just one option to do the traditional format. Um, so there, there was also like a, a lot of um, arguments, like um, or like uh, some of the uh, different ideas about whether we should publish during uh, the, um, the, the 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 PhD or whether we should. Um, actually wait until after PhD, like uh, finish the whole thesis to publish. 
Uh, but generally, when I did my PhD, I um, what I apart from publishing from my own PhD, I also work on some other project with other um, like colleagues um, and friends, and um, many just like a side projects because um, sometimes it just feel like it's too much like to just do one thing like for three four years and doing something uh, as a side track help me to actually refocus on my PhD better. So um, apart from like uh, preparing, like having good profiles after when I profile myself, when I finished the PhD, uh, it's also a good way for me to explore different areas um, and to see which one would be the one that uh, I could focus potentially to repair for my uh, for the, 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 the career after the PhDs as well. So thank you, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. So the mm -hmm. career and also the motivation that I think is very good. And I'm sure that a number of us in this room sharing the same uh, feeling as well. Um, Felix, what was some of your motivation? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, inviting me. And I guess thank you as well for the uh, for the questions. So I think my answer is kind of like somewhat a point uh, what Sarah mentioned especially uh, i have to i guess two motivation the first one is kind of like similar to what she said about kind of uh, because obviously when we write paper yes thesis is mainly uh from us right we have to do the thesis on our own but when we start work uh, when we in reality when we start working in the academia you know that we have to actually work with other people so i think starting to actually build uh, my research network i think that's one of uh my motivation and the second one is more really kind of like part of the part of the learning itself because you know i got to realize when i start submitting my paper uh it's not even part of my thesis right it's a part of my actually master's thesis when i when i first submitted i just realized that like you know writing a, a writing a paper is one thing but publishing it is actually another thing takes even longer and sometimes more difficult to actually publishing a paper more than just finishing one, right? So I think once I get to realize that I kind of like uh, have more this motivation, that, then that means I have to also have this, this, you know, like review process experience, you know, being in the review process as much as possible so that I can also, you know, publish in the future because it's not just writing a thesis. I got to realize that it's like you know publishing it's it's much more difficult and time consuming sometimes than just finishing a paper. So I think I guess for me those are the two. Yeah, thank you for sharing. It's interesting that you and I agree that you mentioned about writing is not the same thing to publishing, and it's also give you experience to improve during your PhD as well. Um, and we will touch that later on into today's session. Um, Catherine. Oh well. <laughs> When I was doing my PhD, I did not publish. However, <laughs> I have some advice just in normal how I advise my PhD students. Since you don't spend so much time doing your, um, you know, doing a PhD, do the same thing, you know, why not just publish? If you want to stay in academia, you know, publishing is the uh, one of the critical means for you to sustain this field. Um, doing traditional thesis, it was, it was, you would spend the same amount of time. So I believe that um, you know, since you spend the time and learn the methodology, why not just learn how to publish? And it will become a good foundation for your future career. So that's just, um, I, I didn't publish when I was doing PhD because I, I was planning to go back to industry, you know, um, but then um, because I became a mother, then I uh, had to become an academic. And then I started publishing, <laughs> publishing crazily. And then I uh, become a fan. I used to publish it to survive, to you know, you know, publish perish, and then I realized, you know, that's no longer the case. Probably for some uh, early acad academic career researchers, still need to publish. Uh, as you publish a lot, probably think of publishing is a fun, but in the beginning stage, you know, during PhD, because you have to spend all the time doing your research, doing, you know, you have to finish your PhD and then spend the time for something that's going to conducive to your future career. So that's my advice. And then, you know, that's my advice for all PhD students. And like I said, because I didn't publish during my PhD and I had to work 10 times harder to publish afterwards. So this uh, experience might become motivation for you. That's what Thank I can you, say. Catherine. 
Yes, I think you made a two, three good point there. First one, I, I catch that uh, from the from the last point is that um, publish after the PhD might take 10 times harder. It's true. And also take 10 times longer as well during the wait time because nowadays you might need to have some papers just to get a first job. And if you don't have any, that first job waiting time might take quite some time to, you know, before it's arrived. And also you made a very good point about public publish or perish. Nowadays, it's not like that anymore. When you become senior lecturer or also a professor, professor, you do not have to publish anymore. But to, just to get the first job from, you know, first job to a lecturer or promote to a senior lecturer, you might need to still have some papers. There are some other aspects to look at as well, but not just papers uh, moving forwards.